Hi everyone, it's Sam Mackay here from Enterprise DNA. So I want to talk about a common scenario uh, that uh, has recently popped up on the Enterprise DNA support forum. So we'll quickly jump into it. It's basically you have a uh, you have a list of data, and say um, a customer is referenced many many times, right? Um, and you want to work out what is the most recent date or recent value for a particular customer or, or a particular name. In this particular example that was placed into the forum, it was some survey data. So we wanted to see who was the who when was the most recent survey that this particular person or any particular person um, took. Okay. And so we have some survey data here and the question is, you know, when we want to work out when was the last time that they took the survey and then what were the more pre the, the prior times that they took the survey and now basically all you have to do is work out okay when was the last time that they took the survey and then you can work out every single one that was prior to that now you can actually do this a couple of ways you can do it for in, in um, calculated columns and also you can do it with, with measures now you know that I'm much more in favor of measures because calculated columns in my view are most of the time unnecessary you can do everything you need basically um, within measures. So I'm going to show you how you can actually actually do both here, how you can work out the most recent date for any particular um, dimension, in this case, in this case, customer um, in your uh, in your data set. Okay, so let's just, I've set up a little bit of a demo here. Let me just drag this to the side. <clears throat> and there's there's lots of different scenarios. I mean, when, we, when I was working through the solution here, there's there's a lot of scenarios here where this is quite relevant, right? Where you want to dy you want to either in a static way in a calculated column, or in a more dynamic way, in a measure, work out what was the last date, um, and then you could say branch out into other calculations as well from there. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to um, just go new column here, and I'm, I'm going to go max date. I'm going to walk. I'm going to walk through the logic here, right? Now, whenever you think of like a max or or like a maximum date or a maximum number or minimum number, I always think max x. That's the first thing I think, and that's exactly what we're going to use to um, create the solution. And I'm also going to use variables here. Okay, so I'm going to go. Um, I'm going to go variable. Just just and put a var here. And I'm going to call this current name because what we want to do at each different row here is we want to work out okay, well, what is the name of each person? Okay, um, and the way we can do that here is quite easily because we just have to reference the column name because we're in a calculated column. Okay, and then I'm going to come down and I'm going to go return, and then this is where max x comes in. Okay, so basically at every single row here, what we want to do is we want to just isolate. The people with this the, the same name as that current row, and so if we have a look down here, you'll see that there's only two of John Smith, um, and then two of this person, two of this person, etc. Um, and so we basically, at each different row here, want to just isolate those names and then work out what is the maximum date that that person has done something with us, either made a purchase, completed a survey, etc. Okay, so. Um, I'm going to, first of all, to do that, you usually, you basically just want to use filter, right? Filter enables you to do that pretty easy. Then I'm going to go, okay, remove all, any filters on um, this particular table that we're in. Okay, so I'm going to say remove any filters here. And then iterate, and, and this, what all does also enables you to iterate through every single row in this particular table in any context, right? So in this particular result here, this very first one, we're in this we're in this row's context, right? But now we want to iterate through using filter every single row and work out is the name equal to the current name, right? A variable, okay? And I actually want to put this on the same line as well, okay? So now uh, we're basically in max x going to get a table of only two rows now because we've filtered it down by iterating through each row and saying is the name equal to the current name john smith okay and then when we have those two rows then what i want to do is i only want to evaluate what is the max date this was taken okay i just realized that's actually spelled wrong so i'll fix that up this is actually Okay, so you see, 
MaxX does the max for us, so all we have to put in is this particular column here. Okay, and so you see here, let's actually just have a quick look, let's turn this to a date. And so you'll see that the max date for John Smith is the 23rd of the 2nd, 23rd of the 2nd. What's the max date for Nancy Jones? It's the 25th of the 9th, 25th of the 9th on both the rows here. And the last one here, 22nd of the 9th and 22nd of the 9th. Okay, so that's how, and that's actually not too difficult, right? That's actually quite um, quite intuitive. Um, so, and, and very handy, right? Because you've got to, got to remember, you, you could have a totally different scenario here, but this, this same sort of logic would apply if you wanted to find the last particular purchase of or, or or last particular anything last particular sale amount or something like that this this would be a similar technique you could use okay let's jump over into here and I just want to show you how you can quickly do this in um, in a measure which I I recommend more honestly um, so let's actually just create a quick table here yeah you know, I, I always prefer measures because you always want to start simple with measures and branch out I say this over and over again it is, it is totally the best way to run any calculations in Power BI. Um, now, okay, so if I just wanted to set up this particular, I'm going to just set up a really small um, small table here. don't need any of the other ones because that information isn't, isn't relevant to this particular calculation. And then all I can have to do is create a new measure here. And I'm just going to copy this in. Um, sorry. So I'll just change uh, these over to what they should be. And then we'll quickly go through it. So this is just actually from the solution that I worked up in the forum. And you'll see that it's actually exactly the same technique here. And we'll just uh, make it look a bit nicer. Okay, so you see here, this is, this is actually exactly the same technique, but it's in a measure. And the only thing that is different really is this particular part of the variable here where we've actually gone um, we've gone selected value instead of just referencing the column name because we have to somehow capture the um, if we, we can't we can't reference column name here because it's it's in a measure and we have to somehow capture what context or what row we are in um, or what context we're in basically because this particular context here, um, is say John Smith, this one's here Elaine Anderson, this one's Nancy Jones and so what selected value does is it enables us to grab that text value from this context and put it there. What we could also do, just to show you that this is way more dynamic than the other calculation, we could say um, take out this date here and then only have the max date for each different customer on one row. And that's what measures enable you to do much better than what say calculated columns um, enable. Okay, so hopefully hopefully you found that one, uh, hopefully you found this one interesting. I think uh, this does come up from time to time and this is this is actually just, it's, it's, the solution it does not need to be hugely difficult, right? It can be done very simply um, either way, calculated column measure, totally prefer the measure though. Um, and hopefully you can understand you know, how you can manipulate that, that virtual table within MaxX. So you see here MaxX, you know, using filter, um, iterating through things with filter and then uh, uh, re adjusting the, the, the virtual table based on the parameters that you put in the filter statement. And then MaxX does the work from there. Okay, some good learnings there. So hopefully you can find um, some, some way to use this if required in your own data set. Okay, thanks for, thanks for tuning in. Appreciate, um, appreciate a like on the video if you um, got some help out of this content. And don't forget to subscribe to Enterprise DNA TV as well. Lots of great content coming out soon. Okay, take care.